Hi everyone, hope all of you are doing well. Friends, welcome to English for Presentations Part 3. And this is going to be my final part in this series. In Part 1, I talked about introduction, how you should talk about your topic, how you should give your presentation flow a summary, and how you should let the audience know your method of handling questions. In Part 2, I talked about phrases for referring to slides and graphics and how to talk about cause and effect. And in this, the final part, I'm going to talk about rephrasing and correcting. Uh, how you should conclude your presentation and how you should take questions. What are the phrases you can use in all these three scenarios? If you haven't seen part one and part two, I will put a link in the description. Please do go and watch that. So let's get started. So friends, what happens if you make a confusing statement or if you make a mistake during a presentation? Well, first of all, please do not panic. Everybody makes a mistake and it is not the end of the world. Now here are some phrases you can use to correct yourself and get back on track. Now phrases for saying something again using different words. Now you can say the same thing using different words. First one, let me put that another way or let me rephrase that or in other words. Now you can use these three phrases and complete your uh, so what, complete whatever you were saying. These are phrases for saying something using different words. Now what are some of the phrases for correcting a mistake? Here are some examples. First one, I'm sorry that's not correct. I meant to say that. We've hired 15 new employees, not 50. You're putting emphasis on both these words, 15 and 50, because somewhere the audience has misunderstood. Second one, excuse me plus correction with emphasis. For example, the school was founded in 1999. Excuse me, 1989, right? You committed a mistake out here. You put emphasis on 1989 because by mistake you said 1999. So your emphasis was on 1989. So these are some of the phrases for correcting a mistake. Now let's move on to the conclusion. Now friends, at the end of your presentation, you can give a brief summary of your main points or the most important message in the presentation. Some of the phrases which you can use are in conclusion and complete your statement. Number two, I close by summing up the main points and then you go ahead and sum up the main points. Finally, let me briefly remind you what we've covered. As your final phrase, you can say, Thank you for your attention. So these are three phrases which you can use to conclude your presentation. And finally, you can say, thank you for your attention. Now comes the turn of handling questions. Now this is something you've already made clear in your introduction. You've already told the audience how you're going to be handling questions. Now let us say that you have told the audience that you will be taking questions at the end. What are some of the phrases you can use? Now to inform the audience that you're ready to answer questions, you can say, does anyone have any questions? This is usually done in a smaller meeting group. I'd like to open it up for questions now. Usually done where present when you're presenting to a larger group. Now here are some situations. Now if you didn't hear the person's question, you can say, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Could you repeat it? Now if you didn't understand the question, you can say, I'm sorry, I don't quite understand your question. Would you mind rephrasing it? And the expressions I'm sorry and would you mind are included for politeness. So let's move on. Another situation, if the question requires information that you don't have at the moment, but you could find out later, then use this phrase. That's an interesting question. I don't actually know at the top of my head, but I'll try to get back to you later with an answer. Another situation, if you can't answer the question, but someone else can, then say, unfortunately, I'm not the best person to answer that but I can put you in touch with a colleague of mine. Finally, if the answer to the question will be very long, you can say that. I'm afraid that would take a long time to explain, but maybe you and I can talk about it more in depth afterwards. Now, what does this mean? This means that you don't want to answer the question immediately, but you're willing to talk to the person about it after the presentation, because that's going to take too much of time. So friends, that is the end of this video and this is, was the final one in the English for Presentation series. Friends, if you have found value, please give me a like, please subscribe to my channel, please press the bell and please do let me know in the comments that what are some of the other topics you would like me to make videos on business English. That will really motivate me and help me to prepare videos which you people like. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next one.